Father Spencer decided this is chapter 33. Father Spencer decided a phone call was improper to the Lollers and decided to take a plane into Hartford and rent a car and drive the 20 miles or so. The death of someone like Bob Lawler deserved, no demanded, more than just a phone call. He took a morning flight from Midway and arrived at Hartford a little past noon. He hopped in his rented Mercury Sable and followed the easy directions to get on I-91 South. He passed through the skylight of Hartford and could see the gold dome of the state capitol off to the right. He traveled past Weatherfield, Rocky Hill, Cromwell, and Middletown until he got to exit 17 East Main Street and got off the interstate. He stopped at Darby's Gulf Station and got directions to the Lawler's home. It was now almost 1 p.m. He pulled into the driveway and found an older woman pulling weeds from the flower bed to the right of the front steps. It must be Mary, he thought. Coming down the driveway was a portly gentleman pushing what was like an empty wheelbarrow with a shovel hanging out to one side. This must be Gus. Father Spencer exited the car and walked around, starting up the front walkway. Mr. and Mrs. Lawler, inquired Father. I'm Father Spencer from Moody Bible Institute. Gus made his way over to where Mary had been working. She was now standing, brushing the dirt from her hands and then wiping them on her garden apron. Hello, Father, said Mary with a loving smile. On her face, this is my husband Gus, Bob's father. Father, the men shook hands. Could we go inside, asked Father Spencer. I need to talk to you. Sure, come on in, replied Gus. Let's go inside. Gus placed his hand warmly on Father's shoulder as he ushered him up the few steps leading into the house. Mary followed. Would you like some lemonade or something else to drink? Asked Mary. No, replied, replied Father Spencer. This is not a social call, I'm afraid. Bob not doing well in school? Gus asked. You know, Mary, I thought my, Bob might have a little trouble at first getting back into studying after almost four years in the military. Father looked into his hands. He was wringing in his lap. Mary sensed immediately that it was more than that. Father, what is it? asked Mary. Is Bob all right? I'm afraid not, responded Father Spencer, stumbling for the words. Your son Bob was murdered last night at a basketball game. It appeared to be a drug-related commando-style attack. Bob was just one of over 25 innocent bystanders who were killed. I cannot even begin to tell you how sorry I am. There is no way I could just call and tell you such terrible news over the phone. Mary and Gus were both so stunned, neither could speak. Gus put his arm around Mary as she pulled a small hanky from her dress and began to wipe away the tears as she began sobbing uncontrollably. Mary tried to regain her composure. Gus, do you know where Becky went off with Dave? Mary asked. We have to tell her right away. We also have to call the pastor and get him started making funeral arrangements. Mary, Mary just rambled on and on, so nervous. Gus, you'll have to go to Chicago and pick up the body, I suppose. Right, Father? asked Mary, allowing all these peripheral issues to overtake her immediate release of grief. Mary, I can take care of all of that for you, if it was like, offered Father Spencer. You will have enough to deal with back here. If you let me know what funeral home you'll be using, I will promise you to take care of it all. Well, that's very nice of you, Father, said Mary. If you will excuse me, I think 
I would like to go lay down for a while, said Mary. As she rose, she kissed Gus on the cheek, extended her hand to Father, and clasped it warmly. Thank you for coming all this way. It means so much to me and Gus. Mary walked slowly down the hall to her room. You could hear the door close behind her. Father turned to Gus. Gus, I am so terribly sorry to have you bring you this news. He made his way toward the front door. You know, Father, said Gus, we just never worried about Bob this way. All the time in the service, flying planes, we just never worried about him getting killed or even hurt. Maybe we just thought if we ignored the danger, nothing would happen to him. It wasn't so much our faith, just that Bob always seemed so invincible, I guess. I think we all feel that way a little bit, that we can never be the victim, replied Father Spencer. Unfortunately, this was totally senseless. Your son was truly a class act among young men. He is going to be terribly missed. Well, thank you, Father. That is nice of you to say, said Gus. I can tell you that he would have made a great pastor, added Father. I am sure of that. He shook Gus's hand and made his way back to the car. He had given Gus his card and told Gus to have the funeral home contact him directly. He promised to let go and Gus know all the details that were worked out. Gus just kind of stood there at the front door, motionless, staring out into the yard and then into the street. He watched Father Spencer back the car down the driveway and head back out to Bradley Airport. Once Father got to the airport and boarded his return flight to Chicago, it was probably a good thing that Father Spencer didn't drink. He sure could have used one on this flight home. He sat in his window seat and began browsing through the Hartford Current newspaper brought by the flight attendant. He turned to a page two and found headlights of national news. A small news brief read AP Chicago. A drug-related commando-style attack claimed the lives of 25 in the city suburbs. Father Spencer folded the paper quietly in his lap. He stared out the window. The flight attendant came by. Father, can I get you something else to read? She inquired. Yes, he replied, never taking his eyes from the window. That would be a great idea. <laughs>